Call your witness. Thank you, Your Honor. State calls Dr. Janice Ross. Once you're seated, state your full name, calling your last known record, please. Dennis Edwards Ross, R-O-S-S. -S. Dr. Ross, um, you've testified earlier on this matter, and I want to revisit the autopsies you performed on September 11th, 2014. I'd like to begin, did you document the autopsy process and the initial, your initial uh, process when you found or received the bodies of these children? Did you photograph the condition the bodies were in? Yes, I did. I may, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Again. Oh, no, I forgot. Dr. Ross reminds you you're under oath. Still. Okay. She got sworn again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Question has been previously marked state's ID 212 uh, as to came in as bag number one. We now know Elias Jones. Showed you two photographs to see if you can identify these. Or three photographs 212A, B, and C. Yes, those are uh, photographs of who we uh, found out was Elias Jones uh, when they entered the morgue. All right, after 212A, does that photo depict the, the way the bag appeared when it was on the autopsy table as it was received by you? Yes, it was torn. And do you see animal activity in that torn portion? Yes, um, one of the limbs, I think it was the arm, uh, has some tissue loss. 212B states ID. Do you see clothing or a shirt worn by Elias at that time? Yes, it has a logo for the elementary school, Saks Gotha. Is it a, the power of one at Saks Gotha Elementary? Yes. And that's how he was clothed when he arrived? Yes. In C, which is 212C for ID, is that the full body with the clothing? Yes. And does it show the left arm? Yes. And I move these into evidence. Previous objection. So the objection. Move on to bag two. Came into you as bag two. We now know it's Mira Jones. Yes. We'll show you what's been marked states ID 213. And you, I believe you've initialed each powder bag that I've got these in. Yes. I've got two photos 213A and 213B. You recognize these? Yes. 213A, does that show? We now know as Mira Jones, and as she was received once you pulled her out of the bag. Yes, she was in a um, um, a um, sleeping bag, which had, uh, was blue but had different balls portrayed in, on it. So it was some type of boys' bedding. It appeared to be yes. Two thirteen B for state's ID. Does that show the? Uh, decomp and animal activity as to her left arm and the missing one? Yes. When you got the bedding off of her, did she have any clothing on her? No. And that's how she appeared when you, you got her? Correct. On her off these and that was to the objection. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm 
show you what came to you as bag three. We now know it's Gabriel Jones, 214 states ID, and you've initialed this. What's going on here as well? Yes. Show you letter A, B, C, D, E, and G. And 214A, is that how Gabriel Jones presented when you got him out of the bag? Yes. Can you describe his position in that? He is face down with his knees underneath him, um, but the uh, right leg, uh, we noted, had been disarticulated at the knee, so the, um, the foot was coming the opposite direction is normal. Okay, and would that be because of him being in a bag? Is it being stuffed in a bag? Most likely, yes. Now looking at 214B ID, is that a shirt? Yes, that was in the bag uh, with him. It uh, looked like a um, an adult size shirt. Is that the Three Fountains chiropractic shirt, adult? Adult large? Yes. 214C for ID, is that a slipper, a girl slipper in that bag? Yes. Now Gabriel's a boy, but this is a girl slipper? Correct. 214D for ID, is that a Hello Kitty journal? Yes. That was in Gabriel's bag as well? Yes. 214E, is that a diaper that was in that same bag? Yes. And then finally, 214G ID. Is this a close up of Gabriel's neck showing the ligature marks that you described earlier in your testimony? Yes. All right. I move all of these into evidence. Subject to the objection. Abigail Jones, state's ID 215, the initial just going on the way as well. Yes. <laughs> show you two photos, A and B. Is 215A for ID, is that how Abigail appeared when you pulled her out of the back? Yes. How, how does she present in this photo? She's wrapped in a, a couple of sheets. Her body's pretty much hidden there? Yes. 215B, is that when you unwrap her? Yes. What is she wearing? Um, she is. Um, a portion of a diaper? Di uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a diaper in there. And yeah. just a portion of one. Right. Okay. Your Honor, I move these and that. Subject to the objection. <clears throat> Finally, Dr. Ross, I want to move on to bag five, which we now know is Natan. State ID 216, and we've initialed this, this going on with the Yes. I've got three photos, 216A, B, and C. And 216A, is that how Natan presented when you pulled him out of the bag? Yes. And what is that wrapped around? A comforter that uh, had ninja turtles uh, depicted on it. 216B, is that when you, you remove the comforter? Yes. What, if anything, is he wearing? Nothing. And then 216C, is that the elbow that you described in your previous testimony? Yes. The injury on that elbow? Yes. 
Were you able to determine if that was pre or post mortem? No. Yeah. But you did note it because it was an injury. Correct. And the bag, had it been torn into? No, it had not. I don't move these into evidence. Subject to objection to 16 A, B, and C. I will not publish these at this time. Yes, sir. Dr. Ross, I do have a few other things I'd like you to look at. States ID 337, 336, 335, 334, and 333. What are these? Those are copies of the official certified death certificates on these five children. Your Honor, move these in that one. No objection. No objection. Uh, Certificates have the names of the children on each of them, respectively. Yes, okay, 333. Three, three. I'll let enjoy. I'll go back. Okay. Yeah. All without objection. Okay. Go ahead and Dr. Ross, looking now, it's been admitted to evidence, states 333. Is this the death certificate for Elias Xavier Jones? Yes. How old was he when he died? Seven. And happened in Lexington County? Correct. Cause of death? Asphyxia due to strangulation. And again, with Elias, was there also evidence of a neck injury that you described earlier? Yes, the hyoid bone was fractured. As to states 334, is this Mira Gracie Jones? Yes. How old is she? Uh, at that time, she was eight. Eight years old, county of death in Lexington? Le yes. And cause of death? Homicidal violence. 335, Gabriel Asher Jones. Uh, how old is he? Two years. And the county was? Lexington. And cause of death? Homicidal violence, probable str strangulation. And again, did you have evidence of striation marks from a belt or some type of device to strike? Yes. States 336, Abigail Elizabeth Jones, how old is she? One year. And county of death? Lexington. Cause of death? Homicidal violence. And then finally, Natan Jones, I can't pronounce his middle name, it's a H E H S D Y D? Correct. Uh, how old was Natan? Six. And what county he died in? Lexington. And then cause of death? Homicidal violence. Now, Natan. In the last phase of this case, you also showed a photo to the jury of a knee. Do you remember what the evidence was as to that knee? Yes, there was a, a wound in the bone uh, which was exposed um, that looked like it was uh, caused by a sharp instrument like a saw or a knife. Dr. Ross, thank you so much. No question. Dr. Ross, thank you very much. State calls Janet Reichard.
Best watch you still on the road. You're the sister press man. Yes. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You testified previously in this case. Yes, ma'am. Give us a little information again about yourself. Where are you currently employed? I am currently working as an assistant principal at Pillion Elementary School. Right. Could I ask you to pull the microphone up a little bit closer? Sure. Yes. And a little bit forward. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, so just to elaborate on that, um, I worked at Saxagatha Elementary for seven years prior to that. I have a degree in business and um, became certified to teach in 1998, taught first grade for 13 years, got my master's from the University of South Carolina in educational administration and have been working as a school administrator since that time. All right. And then in addition to the work that you've done at uh, Saxgatha and Pillion, uh, what uh, type of work will you be doing in the upcoming school year next fall? <laughs> I just learned recently that um, the upcoming school year I have been named principal at Red Bank Elementary School. So another elementary school? Another elementary school. Saxgatha, how long were you there? I was at Saxgatha for seven years as an AP. All right. Take us through your experiences with the Jones children, what you recall about them first coming in, and Mira being a first grader, all the way through 2014. Okay, um, and I apologize if I get a little emotional, but um, when they came in to us, um, Mira was going into first grade and Eli was going into kindergarten. Um, very sweet children, very loving children, made friends very easily. Um, Mara was a little bit behind academically, so we immediately began to put some interventions in place with her to try to bring her up to where she needed. She was um, behind in reading and early literacy, early math skills, so we worked to, to bring her up to where she needed to be. And then Elias started out in kindergarten. I called him Eli, so I'll probably revert to that often because we were, we were very close. Um, but both of them, you know, went through that, that school year. And then the next school year, as they progressed on, then Natan came to us and entered kindergarten. Um, so got to know Natan as well. Um, they both, all, well, three of them progressed on through the grades, and um, they were wonderful children, made friends easily. Mara had her special friends, one little girl that she was particularly fond of that they played very well together, and Eli loved making friends and just really was a friend to everybody. He was a little mischievous, um, brought a turtle to school, um, silly little things like that, but nothing that was really major as far as behavior goes, and those were just teachable moments for us. And then Natan, Natan was, he was a active little thing, very busy, and again, made friends well and, and did well in his class. I wanna ask you about Mira. You had the chance to know her from first grade all the mm -hmm. way, all the way through. Yes, ma'am. What do you remember about Mira uh, as a child? What type of child was she? She was always dressed like a little lady, always had on a skirt or a dress, usually had her hair pulled back in a ponytail, just very sweet, typically quiet, but always smiling, always happy. Um, as I said before, she enjoyed making friends with others and, and had certain children that she preferred to play with, friendly and outgoing. And Your Honor, I believe this is already uh, marked as that's Mara. I'm going to show you these items and ask you whether or not you recognize them. This would be Martha State. This is okay. And then one more. The All right, so these items this is Eli's leadership notebook. This is Natan's leadership notebook. 
and Mira's leadership notebook. And each child at Saxagatha had what we called a leadership notebook. And that was just, that was used to track throughout their elementary career. Um, we kept items in it, their mission, their goals, data, leadership roles that they ha held, any celebrations. And it was part of our Leader in Me initiative. But the leadership notebook followed them from year to year, so it was a cumulative record of their academic performance. So it, it went from one homeroom to the next homeroom, and they kept collecting their artifacts and just building in this notebook. And after the murders, what role did you play in collecting these materials, these notebooks, and providing them to agents from the State Law Enforcement Division? Well, it, it had a lot of their academic data in it and we would you know typically if they got some type of award we would make a copy of the award we would send the original home but we would keep a copy in here so we collected all of this and turned it over to sled in those early days after everything happened and your honor we offer all of these uh, items as evidence at this time I'm sorry Number four. That was um, page 223, 255, and 278. 223, 255, and 278, all without objection. talk about Amira. Um, what do you remember about her uh, first grade teacher year? Who was her teacher that year? She had um, Ms. Fran Lee for first grade. Um, when she came in, like I said earlier, she was a little bit behind. So, of course, Ms. Lee was, was concerned about the fact that she was um, not quite at the level of her same age peers. So, we made sure that we started with RTI interventions to try to, to bring her up to where she needed to be. All right. Items, and I'm just going to call out the numbers okay. and see if you can tell us if you recognize them. This would be state 247, 244, 249 and 252. Don't we to just kind of go through these? Well, I was going to ask you okay. to recognize them. And sure. If you do, we'll I, I do. Offer them so this was a reading award that she received for um, making great gains in reading. That was for second grade. Let me ask you this way. Do you, mm -hmm. or do you recognize them all? 
Oh, yes. All right, and mm -hmm. then also these photographs, we'll call out these numbers for you. Okay. 242, mm -hmm. 243, 241. You recognize all of those? All of those, yes, ma'am. These uh, fair and accurate representations of the items? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Your Honor, all of these uh, items would be for evidence at this time? Mm hmm. as well. 238, 240, and 239. You recognize mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Those items offered as well as No objection. For the record, states exhibits 239. I'm sorry. 238, 239, 240, 242, 241, 242, 242, 243, 244, 245, 246, 247, 248, 249, 251, 252, and 253, all admitted without objection. Yes, ma'am, that was Ms. Lee, and that's Mira on the, the bottom row to the far right. All right. And then second grade. Let me show you some photographs. We've got 243. Yes, ma'am, she was in Ms. Kessner's second grade class that year. And also... Do you take pictures more than once a year? We do. We typically do a fall picture, and then, you know, our, our photography company, they like to try to sell some more, so they come back out, and they'll take a group picture like the one that you saw from Mira's first grade year, and then they'll come out and do a spring picture with a pretty background. So that was her second grade spring picture, I believe. Uh, for, um, first grade, I believe, with Miss Lee. Yes, ma'am. That was her first grade class and her teacher. Second grade? Yes, second grade with Miss Kessner. Um, they were not for third grade, um, Eli for second. No, ma'am, those had not been taken yet. The, the murders happened prior to Yes, ma'am, they did. Very early in the school year. And then where did Eli attend kindergarten? Eli um, was at kindergarten at Saxagatha. He was in Miss Steele's kindergarten class. That's him in the third row, second from the left. Um, some awards that Mira received. Are you often someone who signs off on the awards? I did. Um, we had multiple things that we would recognize our students for, whether it was, you know, academic gains, whether it was some type of, you know, celebration or leadership award, and oftentimes I did sign off on those. You mentioned that when Mira first arrived in first grade, she was a little bit behind. Mm -hmm. How did you progress through that first grade year and into the second grade? Well, Ms. Lee worked very hard with her, um, and she did. we did get her other academic assistance through RTI interventions, and she really did, she made very good progress. And I think one of those certificates was for the growth that she showed over that year. Um, and then she, she continued to grow and made great progress in second grade as well between first grade and second grade, there was a significant Oh, yes, ma'am.
This one, 247, is dated May 27th, 2014. <coughs> so it would be the spring of her second grade year. Right. That would have been the end of second grade. And I'm not sure what measure was used to track that, whether it was math or whether it was her reading level, um, but that just showed her growth over time, and, and she had obviously made great growth. She was named the brightest rising star, so it was a most improved category. The brightest riding, rising star in the field of reading. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you what is 244. It's black and white, but it is dated from June 2013, so this would have been at the very end <coughs> of first grade. Very end of first grade, and that was with um, Ms. Lee, and that was based on a measure called MAP, and it, it stands for Measure of Academic Progress, and it's just one of those, just a, a benchmark tool that we use to track student growth over time, so that showed that <laughs> she had made the, the highest MAP gain over that first grade year in reading which was excellent. All right. I'm going to show you another award um, from also from I think the last day of school in first grade uh, with Miss Lee. And this is States 245 called the Kit Kat Award. Oftentimes teachers would do like just little individualized awards to recognize their students for hard work. And, and that was one of those that Ms. Lee gave out. And I imagine if I'm not mistaken, she probably not only got the certificate, but she probably got an actual Kit Kat too, because that was pretty typical. So that was just to award her for all of her hard work that school year. All right, I'm gonna show you what is also dated um, October of 2013. So roughly the fall of her second grade year. So being a leader in me school and a, a PBIS school, we worked very hard to give our students recognition throughout the school year, not just at the end of the year. So our teachers, including our related <laughs> arts folks, um, any other people in our building could choose to give awards like, like this to a student. So that came from Ms. Marsh, who was our music teacher for related arts, and she would recognize students periodically for doing a really good job in the classroom, and she would often give them a certificate. So that's that's what that one is for. Another is going to be 251. <coughs> and tell us uh, what this award is for, from Mira. So we did monthly lead rallies, and one of our partners with our Leader in Me initiative was Bojangles. They were a big supporter, and they would bring certificates to us that um, kind of reflected the work that we were doing with the seven habits. And they would give us the certificates that might um, be presented to a child for something that they had done a really good job at, in this case, for being respectful. And then on the other side, that was the, the real treat. They got to go to Bojangles to get either a, a biscuit, a French fry, a kid's meal, that type thing. So that was something that she had received for being respectful. All right. And then what is meant, or what was meant at Chicago <coughs> Elementary uh, by the term Starbucks? Starbucks. So that was kind of our school-wide <laughs> currency that we used. Um, we, as I said before, we used Leader and Me, and we're also a PBIS school, Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports. Those Starbucks were kind of our, our daily currency or our daily um, reward that we would give to students for seeing them modeling good behavior, making good choices, um, following school rules and expectations. All right. So in addition to what we see in States 246, uh, did Mira also receive those Starbucks for yes, she did. 248 and 249? Yes, ma'am. She sure did. Community. I can rephrase that. Rephrase it. Within Saxe Gotha, 
classmates, faculty? Are you a community? We are, absolutely. Did the murders of Natan, Eli, and Mira impact that community? Julie, I have that is inappropriate. If it's Stone versus State. Let me see you, Casey. Okay. Your Honor, we may approach one more time. Sure. Please rephrase your question. the murders occurred. Uh, were you working there at the school at that time? Yes, ma'am. And is that something uh, that you had to deal with as an administrator there at the school? Yes, ma'am, it was. All right. Ultimately, what actions did the school take to memorialize the Jones children? Well, obviously we had a lot of um, community members, law enforcement, parents, faculty, staff, a lot of people wanted to do something to memorialize the children. We knew that at the end of the year, we would have some type of tribute for them in our yearbook, and that was done. But we also began to get questions about being able to make like monetary donations and that type thing. So um, through the Lexington foundation, it's the Lexington School Dis District One Foundation, Education Foundation. They established a fund where those, um... Hey, well, let's take a break. The jury's determined. Y'all step in the jury room so I can sort this out and make a record of it. <laughs>